Hello everyone and welcome to the series about IPython Notebook. This is the fifth part and it's about plotting charts. Um, we will uh, be covering the basics of uh, plotting charts with the Matplotlib, which is a comprehensive TD plotting library. It's a part of a larger ecosystem um, for um, uh, math, science and engineering work, um, which is uh, NumPy, SciPy, IPython, uh, SymPy and Pandas. So what can we do with uh, matplotlib? Uh, we can do uh, plotting, which is like uh, drawing a line uh, or multiple lines. And this is what we will be covering in this tutorial. But we can do much more than that. We can, um, we can do scattering. Um, uh, we can um, do uh, bars and histograms. We can do uh, pie charts, 3D charts. Uh, we can do a lot of work with images and contours. Um, so let's start by uh, importing the library. Um, whenever we're working with this, we're working actually with um, uh, PyPlot, um, which is um, a sub-module uh, of uh, matplotlib. Uh, and we always import it as PLT. This is almost a standard in um, scientific work. So we'll be importing uh, PyPlot as uh, PLT and NumPy as NP. Um, so uh, we'll uh, define two lists, um, X, which is um, 0, 1, 2, and Y, which is uh, this uh, squared. Um, so um, 0, uh, 1, and 4. Um, 2 times 2 is 4. Um, so we'll execute that. Now we have our X and Y. To um, plot any figures in um, uh, matplotlib, uh, first thing you do is you define a figure. So um, in here I'm going plt.figure, calling the function figure to uh, define a figure. Then uh, a good practice is always to add a subplot inside your main figure and uh, do most of your work within the subplot the subplots. Um, to uh, do that, um, you call your um, figure and you call the function add underscore subplot. Pass 111 to um, define that you're working with one chart. Um, if you're working only with one uh, subplot um, within your figure, you will um, not need to uh, do anything except 111 in here. Um, um, this returned a subplot. Uh, we can plot our numbers with the function plot within our subplot. Uh, uh, we're just passing x and y to this uh, function and calling plt.show to show this chart. Um, and it's um, a line 0 and 0, 1 and 1, 2 and 4. That's our um, data set. But it doesn't really show uh, an exponential curve in here. Uh, a good way to do that is use um, NumPy to increase the number of data points we have between 0 and 2. The way to do that, we're calling uh, the function length space, which returns an array of numbers between 0 and 2 with 20 steps. Uh, so it's the length of uh, this will be 20 between, uh, with numbers between 0 and 2. Um, the y in here will be the x times times, uh, this is powers, 2. So I'm getting um, uh, these numbers to the power 2 and storing them in uh, y high res. So I have x high res and y high res with um, 20 numbers representing this um, exponential uh, function. Um, we'll uh, plot both of them. Oh, sorry, I forgot to execute this. Um, we, we, we will uh, plot our old X and Y, original X and Y, and our high resolution X and Y. And it returned two lines with two different colors um, to tell us that these are different plots. So we have our original rigid line in here and we have our exponential curve in green. Um, 
One thing we have in here is the colors. The um, colors of these lines are automatically generated. We can control the colors we want to use um, using um, color parameter. So we can use the color parameter uh, to um, select any color we want. And we have another parameter in here, uh, line style. I'm using dashed. We can use solid if we want. And you will get this dashed green line. Um, there is another way to um, style your um, line and give it colors by passing a parameter or an argument with R dash dash. R is short for red and dash dash is the line style telling it's a dashed line. Um, this will return the exact same thing. You don't have a lot of control using this so it's um, better to use um, this color and line style uh, this will also help someone who doesn't understand the matplot library or python to understand your code where they know this uh, is the red line it's the red dashed line it's really easy to read this then trying to figure out what's r dash dash Um, the next thing uh, we want to do, we want to um, increase the line width um, using uh, line width parameter equals 3. Then I'm showing my plot. And we have this clear red uh, dashed line uh, with the width 3. We can add markers to identify our original data points by using marker and passing the type of marker we want to use in here. I'm using O, which returns a circle. Um, you can see uh, more um, uh, marker styles in uh, the section below. Um, I'm using um, marker face color and I'm using blue as color for this, for these uh, markers. And finally, I'm selecting the marker size and I'm using 5 for the marker size. Then showing the plot. And I get these 20 um, blue points. Uh, identifying up my original data points. Uh, you can use any one of these uh, four um, line styles solid, uh, dashed line, dash dot and uh, dotted lines and you have a very large um, selection of markers including uh, squares, pentagon, star, plus x, diamond. You have a lot of, sel uh, a lot of uh, options to select uh, from and uh, for colors, you can either use the one letter shortcut for some colors or you can name the complete um, uh, color if it's uh, not in this list like gray or anything else. Um, you can use um, RGB um, in um, hexadecimal uh, format and you can use RGBA if you want. Um, uh, you can pass it as a tuple uh, with RGBA so you can col uh, control your alpha you can have um, semi-transparent uh, semi, uh, uh, lines um, or marks for that matters you can use a single number to identify it's a grayscale uh, so you have um, really good control over colors uh, title and grid uh, to set a title for your chart um, you use the function set a title on your subplot uh, notice here I'm using dollar sign dollar sign identifying the code in between is latex code so you can use latex code in your title um, then I'm adding grid to my um, plot and this is the grid that generated it can I can clearly tell that one uh, and one is matching this point um, and I have my uh, title uh, formatted in uh, latex. This um, renders any uh, latex code and shows it in the title. Um, a good practice is to label your axis. So I, I don't have a label in, on my x and y axis. You can do that by uh, calling the function set underscore x label and set underscore y label. Uh, y label. Um, and you can pass any string uh, that will show um, that will show in your um, label. You can use latex if you want in here. I'm not using latex in here. 
Um, so I have my X label and my white label. Uh, controlling the figure size and here we're generating this small nice chart uh, we can create a higher resolution we can control the size of the chart easily in here but it doesn't actually increase the resolution of uh, the chart so if I increase it um, to a very large uh, number I can see that it's not really uh, increasing the resolution of the chart um, but I, what I can do, I can change the figure size uh, and to do that uh, I'm passing uh, a parameter named fig size, short for figure size equals, then you pass a tuple to this um, with the width by height I'm using um, um, 12 by 8 and let's see how does that look and it looks much um, uh, better because it's higher resolution now sometimes you, you want a small chart but sometimes you really need a big chart to show the fine details within the chart visualizing um, numbers as images actually this is um, as w far as we will go with the plotting for now um, in here I will show you a small um, um, trick uh, that will uh, utilize the image capability of um, um, PyPlot. Um, I'm generating a two-dimensional array in here uh, that's 128 by 128 numbers and they're gonna be random. So that's my large two-dimensional array uh, you cannot tell anything from looking at the numbers because you have so many numbers in here uh, but a nice way to visualize your data is to actually show them in, um, in an image and this is how my um, two-dimensional noise look like um, these colors uh, I have numbers between 0 and 128 X and Y uh, and I have these colors representing a, the different values that I have within my two-dimensional array. If I had any patterns in here, I would have seen some patterns um, that links X and Y. So this is really helpful once you're trying to find any patterns or visualize your data. Um, one good uh, thing you can do is add a color bar to that so you have an index to your colors um, that did not execute I'll just pause the video for a second uh, sorry for that that's a common um, a bug in uh, IPython where it um, freezes um, your uh, output basically it doesn't show any output the way to uh, deal with that you save your uh, notebook close it and open it again and it will work after that so we'll continue in here we uh, use the color bar uh, function to return uh, color bar index and we can see our color bar to the side we can tell dark uh, red is one point uh, six is yellow dark blue is zero so we can better understand what's happening here we can use different color maps if that helps visualize things. Um, we can use a gray scale um, by passing the parameter cmap equals plt.cm that's short for color map and there is a long list of um, color maps in here very long list of color maps. I'm using gray scale so let's um, so that uh, visualizes our numbers in grayscale with, with um, 0 is black and 1 is white um, there are so many other color maps available this is paired uh, it's um, a different way to look at your uh, data uh, this uh, listen is available open source on github and it's available on uh, MB Viewer. you can use um, this um, notebook as a reference whenever you're dealing with um, plotting or charting things um, and, the and the link to this is in the description below 
Uh, thank you for watching and I hope if you like this you will subscribe to this channel and watch the sixth part and it's about ipython widgets